With a news update on 99.7-1450 WHTC, I'm Gary Stevens. The country music theme to the featured national entertainment attraction for Holland's annual signature event continues. This morning, the Tulip Time Festival announced that Rodney Atkins will perform at Central Wesleyan Auditorium on the last Friday evening of the 2025 event on May 9th. He follows in the footsteps of Scotty McCreary last year, Sarah Evans in 2023, and Chase Bryant in 2022. Ever since Tulip Time revived its national entertainment attraction following the 2020 cancellation of the event. Now in that year, Gladys Knight was scheduled to perform. The festival also announced that it would be officially begin a day earlier than in the past, with the 96th renewal set to begin on Friday, May 2nd. Dutch Dancing, which is having its 90th anniversary in 2025, will have a new De Familians family dance for parents and young children. Other entertainment acts slated for the festival include Forever Motown Tribute Band at Central Wesleyan Auditorium on May 8th, Second Hand News, a Fleetwood Mac Tribute Band at the Hearing of Holland Civic Center Place on May 3rd, Great Scott Cover Band on May 2nd at the Hearing of Holland Civic Center Place, the Holland American Legion Band, Fiddle Fire, and a Dutch music organ concert at Hope College's Pillar Church. Tulip Time is also planning various hands-on experiences that include VIP tours, a wooden shoe painting class, a cutting board workshop, a fused glass plant steak workshop, wine and cheese tasting, a photo walk, a floral arranging class, and historic walking tours. Returning attractions include the Tulip Time Run, the Artisan Market, the Tulip Immersion Garden, Fireworks, the Carnival, and the Kinder and Volks Parades. More information is in this story at whtc.com. Two more weeks, just two more weeks. Voters can be forgiven if they feel that it's two more months rather than two more weeks before the November 5th general election, considering the consistent and perhaps increased volume and intensity of campaign advertisements, mailings, phone calls, text messages, lawn signs, and billboards promoting or attacking a candidate for public office. While many have opted for absentee balloting, and others await Saturday's start of the nine-day early voting period across most of Michigan, some are already doing their homework, according to Allegan County Clerk Bob Janetsky. You've got a lot of city council elections throughout Allegan County, um, and you've got uh, school board e- elections as well. Uh, and then you've got some local millage proposals. You've got the judges' races. Uh, uh, a lot of people sometimes uh, forget that nonpartisan section, and sometimes uh, those are some of the decisions you're kicking yourself about, you know, three months later saying, well, I wish I would have participated in that. Um, so that, that's one of those situations where the people uh, who take the time and look at the voter guides and read through what the different candidates say have a, a true advantage in, in going into the booth and making sure that they're marking for the candidates that, that they uh, believe in. Could there be some election chicanery going on in Saugatuck? According to a statement from the office of Allegan County Clerk Bob Janetsky, there could be. Quote, my office has received numerous complaints from Saugatuck residents relative to campaign finance violations among candidates running for Saugatuck City Council. The county clerk's office does not oversee such complaints and does not have investigative power relative to the nature of such violations, end quote. Janetsky did not go into details as to the nature of these allegations. He advised those who have such complaints to send them to the Michigan Secretary of State's office through a link in this story at whtc.com. Janetsky added, quote, if the allegations of campaign finance violations are true, the state would then forward them on to the attorney general's office for further action. Campaign finance violation complaints to the state cannot be made anonymously, end quote. There are seven hopefuls vying for four seats on the Saugatuck City Council in the November 5th general election. Mayor Lauren Stanton, along with Helen Baldwin, Scott Dean, and Greg Muncie are running for re-election. Challenged by Joe Leonati, Chris Peterson, and Sherry Tadaldi. There are yard signs in the area promoting Stanton, Baldwin, and Dean together. Could Mark Nedlinger follow in the footsteps of Tim Travis? He could if the Saugatuck Board of Education decides that he is the right man to become the district's new superintendent. He emerged as the only internal candidate for the position, as officials want to seek someone to promote before widening the search for a new operational leader. Nedlinger will interview for the post in a 6 p.m. public session this evening at Douglas Elementary School off of West Randolph Street. The board may then decide whether to begin contract negotiations 
or whether to begin accepting outside applications. Nedlinger has been the principal of Saugatuck Junior Senior High School for nearly the past seven years, succeeding Travis when he was elevated to district superintendent upon the departure of Rolf Timmerman. Travis himself announced his retirement in July. Grand Rapids mayoral candidates Sunita Lunyer and David Legrand held their final debate before the election last night at the Wealthy Theater, focusing on housing, transportation, public safety, diversity, and environmental issues. We've had decades and decades of letting downtown spend its own tax dollars, and that gives us all kinds of distortions. One of the ways in which we can um, reverse underfunding is by funding the Third Ward Equity Fund fully. Lenier and Legrand are looking to replace term-limited Grand Rapids Mayor Rosalind Bliss. The state's average gas price as of this morning is $3.23 a gallon. That's seven pennies less than last week. Adrian Woodland with AAA Michigan says the price is down 14 cents in the past month and 16 cents lower than at this time in 2023. Well, we've moved towards the second half of the switch over from the summer blend to the winter blend, and that usually keeps prices kind of up and down a little. Uh, and I just really think it's kind of like... Some places were up around the state, some places were down, and it literally led to the state average holding steady. A 15-gallon fill-up cost on average $49 in the state. Michigan's most expensive gasoline is in Ann Arbor at $3.28, while Benton Harbor has the most affordable fuel at three fifteen a gallon. Along the lakeshore, Ottawa County's average of three twenty two is two pennies higher than neighboring Allegan County at three twenty. Pinecrest is currently building a $98 million pediatric center of behavioral health east of Grand Rapids and received an $8 million donation for it. Pinecrest President and CEO Mark Eastberg says the COVID-19 outbreak put a spotlight on the lack of support for children. Even before COVID hit, we were sorely lacking in behavioral health services for kids. Long wait times, services that kids needed that didn't exist in the area. The David and Carol Van Andel Family Foundation provided the gift. The wait time to see a child psychiatrist can be months. Frustrated and desperate parents bring their child to an emergency department, and there may not be services for those kids there. The facility is slated to open in about 18 months. Staying safe has been a byword in society since the COVID-19 outbreak of four and a half years ago. And that not only goes for personal health, but also for virtual health. This is the 21st Cybersecurity Awareness Month as proclaimed through presidential and congressional declarations, as well as through efforts of the Federal Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Technology officials such as Tim Westrate of AT&T can't emphasize enough the need for such precautions by consumers, commercial, and nonprofit entities alike. When you think about your digital footprint, think about all of the stuff that's out there, being cognizant of your digital footprint and making sure um, you've got uh, cybersecurity protocols in place is super, super important. An arm of the U.S. Homeland Security Department, CISA encourages the use of strong passwords, turning on multi-factor authentication, recognizing and reporting phishing, and prompt updates of software. Another way to shield oneself from being victimized online is through VPN use. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and that's exactly what it is. It sets up a private digital tunnel within the connection. If you're at uh, a McDonald's or a Starbucks or any place where there's Wi-Fi, if you're connected to that Wi-Fi, you may be vulnerable. But if you're using that VPN connection, that virtual private network, through encryption, you've got a private connection to the World Wide Web, and so you will be surfing safely. So definitely using that that VPN, that virtual private network connectivity is, is very important to protect you when you're out, out of your home, anywhere when you're off your own um, personal network. In conjunction with this awareness effort is a special webinar spotlighting school system protection hosted by CISA tomorrow at 12 noon. An online link to more information on Cybersecurity Awareness Month is in the story at whtc.com. Coming off Saturday's 5-2 win at Nashville, the Detroit Red Wings skate in Queens against the New York Islanders tonight. Coverage with Ken Kell and Paul Woods is at 7.30 p.m. on 99.7-1450 WHTC. Coming off Saturday's 4-2 loss against Buffalo, the Blackhawks welcome the Vancouver Canucks to the United Center in Chicago this evening. 
Looking ahead to football, it begins Thursday night with West Catholic taking on Zeeland West at Zeeland Stadium. Coverage begins at 6.40 p.m. on 99.7-1450 WHTC. Friday evening at 6.40 p.m., hear the Hamilton-Zeeland East game on 99.7-1450 WHTC or the Saugatuck Water Elite Contest on the Lakeshore's 92.7 The Van. On Saturday, Hope College has homecoming against Adrian. Coverage begins at 1.30 p.m. on the Lakeshore's 92.7 The Van. Get the latest news anytime at whtc.com.